What's up guys, this is Heiss, and today we have perhaps the single most exciting piece of railway preservation news in the US in recent memory, maybe even since they announced that the big boy was gonna get restored. This is sincerely one of the coolest things, and the way that they announced this is super, super cool. If you're not plugged into the preservation scene, maybe you haven't seen this, if you are somewhat, it's been all over every Facebook, Instagram, YouTube thing, all over the place, but um, I figured it was worth my time to do the due diligence and make sure that all of you guys had heard about this. And what I'm talking about is the Fort Wayne Railroad Historical Society purchasing the New York Central 3001 and a matching train set, and they're going to start restoring all of it to run it once again. This is absolutely incredible. Now, if you're not familiar, the reason why this is so cool is that the New York Central was one of the most important railroads in the East back in the day. It was basically a race between the Pennsylvania Railroad and the New York Central Railroad for who was the top dog for the longest time. They were kind of the, the big two powerhouses. And oddly enough, preservation steam is kind of scarce in the case of both of them. I looked up the list of all the New York Central locomotives that are preserved, and it's a list that's as long as the list of operating Denver and Rio Grande Western K36 class locomotives. We have as many in one class that run on the narrow gauge that there were from this fantastic railroad, and none of them have ever run in preservation. So 3001 in, you know, whenever they get it done, I would say in 2024, in a couple years, in the 2020s, will be the first New York Central locomotive to have run in the preservation era. And that's a huge deal. And getting a matching train set to go with it of historic New York Central cars is also outstanding and something that's quite rare. Typically, if you see an outfit outside of something like the Class 1s, you get the hodgepodge of many different private cars and it's kind of the, the circus train of all the different colors, but this is going to be a historic locomotive operating in its historic territory, pulling its historic cars. And that's just going to be absolutely fantastic to see. The 3001 is a big choo-choo. It's a 482 type. Uh, us out here in the West would call it a mountain. The New York Central calls it a Mohawk because some of the railroads, of course, had to be different. And the New York Central was one of them, of course. It is a big, sizable 482, something like 60,000 pounds of tractive effort. Very modern. It was built in 1940. It was very late for steam. It's got all of the fun upgrades, all of the fun appliances, all of the modernizations that we're going to be talking about actually in an upcoming video, talking about a Chesapeake and Ohio Kanawa. Very similar in terms of kit to that type of locomotive. Um, so it's going to be something really big, really modern operating again. And the folks that are going to be doing it are no strangers to this. Fort Wayne is where the Nickel Plate Road 765 operates. It's a gorgeous locomotive. Again, another big modern locomotive, a 284 instead of a 482. So they've just spun it around, if you will. <clears throat> but they've been operating the 765 there for a fair amount of time. And they've been there, done that, got the t-shirt in terms of those kinds of rebuilds and getting a locomotive running. So tackling this kind of Herculean task is right up their alley. Now with Big Choo Choo, unsurprisingly comes big dollars as well. They estimate $4.3 million in terms of what they're looking for to fundraise to get the locomotive all done and just the locomotive and tender, not talking about the train set itself. And that sounds like a lot of money, and it is, but at the end of the day, when you start doing the math, it starts to make a fair bit more sense. They've given a cost breakdown and it kind of illustrates what's going on. The cost breakdown basically has two really big ticket items and then many other things that kind of share the cost in a six figure range in the lower end of things. The big two things are contingency for possible inflation, anything else that may come up and just reserve funds for keeping the engine running later. And that's almost a million dollars of that cost. The other big piece that's almost a million dollars as well is the boiler, but it's a modern engine. It was built and then it ran for maybe 15 years and then was put away. It ran when it was parked. Why did they need so much money for the boiler? 
Well, it's now sat outside for presumably 70 to 80 years, basically, somewhere in that time frame. Somebody knows how long it probably had the asbestos on it and jacket that can hold the moisture against things. And every single stable in that boiler is going to have to get checked and probably replaced. And you're talking about several thousand of them at that point. And based on safety regulations, you have to use certified material from certified manufacturers and you start going down the rabbit hole and it goes, oh, well, it's a big engine. It sat outside for a long time. It may have deteriorated significantly. It might be fine in some ways, but everything's got to get checked. Everything's got to get gone through. It's kind of a lot of work. The reaction I've heard from many in railway preservation was one of sticker shock. $4.3 million to go through and restore this locomotive? That's a crap ton of money. You could get a lot of stuff done for that, right? And when you start looking at it and understanding the messaging behind why they came up with that number, it starts to make a little bit more sense, at least to me. If you think, first and foremost, that inflation has been ridiculous recently, <clears throat> Anyone who's gone to a grocery store and bought groceries recently can understand that. And what happened to your cans of Coke Zero has happened to steel for locomotives as well. It's kind of a global issue. Just in 2020, the same $4.3 million that they've quoted was $3.5 million. That was what it was worth then. So it's gone up that much in that little of a time. Uh, time's fake and so is all of that fun stuff, which uh, we're not going to get any further into. We talk about trains here. But still, okay, in $2020, $3.5 million. And a good almost third of that is for contingency, for overrun, for anything that might come up and save the rest for what's coming next. Okay, so you're talking about something more like half the price that we're, we see on paper is really what our touchstone should be with. Okay, they're looking in 2020 dollars that we're thinking of in our head, they're looking at something like 2.2, 2.4 million dollars something to get this done. And in 2020 dollars, 2.2 million dollars restored my itty bitty little 460. I say mine, but at the Colorado Railroad Museum, RGS 20. That was the sticker price on the restoration of that engine, 2.2 million dollars for a locomotive that is a quarter the weight of the 3001. Yes, it was significantly more beat to death, and yes, we were trying to save as much historic fabric as physically possible, rather than replacing things from the get-go that you would try to do for many operating engines. We tried to save a lot of stuff for the sake of preserving history, which is always a fine line to walk, and the project lasting so long, and, and many other things that we need not get into. But that was what the cost ended up being. That's the reality of making a nice running machine in the US these days. It's not cheap, and it depends on how worn out the engine is. And based on comments from some of the folks with Fort Wayne, it's a tired engine. It was worked hard and it's sat and weathered away for quite some time. So maybe they're a little on the high side, but that's a good thing to plan for. And it's always better to say, hey, this is how much we need, then, oh, well, we need half this much, and then the locomotive gets taken apart and sits for the next two decades and never gets put back together, which unfortunately is the reality sometimes with some of these kinds of projects. So it seems to me that, okay, maybe they're on the high side, maybe they're shooting for the moon a little bit, but the whole plan is kind of shooting for the moon, and it's really exciting to see. The history piece of it is going to be so fantastic. Getting a slice of what the New York Central was like back in the 1940s, the 1950s, is gonna be amazing to see, and I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on this. I would love to come out and see it when they get the engine there to the shop and uh, chat with the folks. So, hey, drop me an email if you'd like. I'd love to come out and see it. But if you didn't watch the original announcements, you need to. One of the folks with Fort Wayne is Kelly Lynch, and Kelly is a true honest-to-God filmmaker, and it shows in the messaging that they've put out. Those films are spectacular. Um, I might make content. I, I would not call myself a filmmaker. I make content for YouTube. Kelly makes films. Um, it, it's kind of inspirational, and the way that it was set up, 
so cool. So make sure you check out the original announcements. Consider doing a donation. Every little piece helps. Uh, and, and honest to God, this is really one of the coolest things that I've heard of in a long time. And yeah, it's going to cost a lot of money. But as the mechanic said in Princess Diaries, it costs a lot of money to be cool. So we'll, uh, we'll be keeping a close eye on this. And I'm really excited to see what happens. So if you hadn't heard, now you know. If you had heard, now you know that, of course, I know. And I'm excited as well. So as always, folks, thanks so much for watching. We'll catch y'all next time.